sorry they've got all the ribbons on the opposite side in this play, zombie. And the third place award, third goes to number 366, downtown Strutter. Jim Oganius of Knoxville is the whip. Exiting, if you will, on the opposite end that you came into the ring, please. Once again, let's show our appreciation to these drivers of these fine roadster ponies. Thank you for a very interesting class, as always. Thank you. Well, Becky, here we have it again with Bobby Holder from Maryville winning, I think this is his 15th year on King Man's Red Rooster. That's outstanding. That is outstanding. <laughs> and he was certainly a, a favorite of the crowd. He's my favorite. <laughs> and then Stephanie... McGainus from Knoxville on Radiant took second, and I guess that's her father, Jim McGainus, took third. I would assume so. So Stephanie did great. She did, did really good for one. <laughs> no, no, wait a minute. Don't say that. She did really good. She did great. She did really good, and we're happy to see a woman take second. Well, second place, yeah. I guess so. She did great. She did great, Stephanie. Now, Debbie, let's see what we've got coming up here. Plantation Pleasure Walking Horses. No built-up feet. So these are walking horses again, but they are not your show horses that you normally think of. But these people put a lot into showing them as well as your regular built-up feet walking horses. So. Built-up feet or the... I they normally don't have the chains either on their feet. So they won't be like the class we saw before? No. I think Brenda Turners, Turnage, Turnage was going to be in this class. I thought that's what she said. Okay. I'm so. not, let's see. No, no. She said she was going to be in class 12. Okay. Then maybe it was It Kathy. may have been Kathy was going to okay, be in this we'll class. Okay. We'll have to watch we'll for We'll look and see if uh, who all's names on here. This, this is it. Class number five. Donna Castle doing a tremendous job going Plantation and getting all these pleasure. names for us. And Harold Robertson, who is one of the committee members, has been helping her get this information. Harold's been really good and real active and, with uh, the Putnam County Fair, and he was the one that gave me a little bit of information winners. about As, uh, the horse show for tonight. And her first drawing of the night. There's Donna. Wave. Wave, Donna. Good job. Here at the fair this uh, week. And to be drawn for it this time is a gas grill supplied by Suburban Tex Gas of Cookville. Suburban Tex Gas and Q94 and WPTN's drawing, and the lucky winner is Mike Smith, Route 12, Cookville. Mike Smith. We're going to let you know some Cookville. of the folks who are going to be in this particular category. They've WPTN called for that one, but we haven't, uh, we haven't had it come out yet. So I guess they'll be coming out in a few minutes. What you think? A lot of these riders, I shouldn't have to since we had the Roadster to Bike class just a minute ago. Here they come are changing tack from one horse to another so sometimes it takes them a little bit of time that was one problem we had the other night we lost about six entries in one class in this particular class we're going to have randall phillips on elam sovereign sovereign go boy i think that would be sovereign right. go boy elam sovereign mm -hmm. go boy i think on um, and that's randall phillips and the owner is randall phillips of cookville John Enric on Pride's Morning Star will be 401 from Crossville. And James Lawson will be riding Heaping Spoonful also from Crossville. Tommy Bandy from All Good will be on Little Phoebe. And Foster Brooks on Ebony's Bay Roller of Hendersonville. That's not the Foster Brooks you're thinking about. Now come on. We have Neil Given Sr. from Crossville on Ebony's. Black Tide, Eben, Ebony's Black Tide. Yeah, that sounds, that looks like what it is. And James Mitchell on Chef Sunrise from Hillham. Nelda Wright from Cookville on Nelda's Red Coin. And you know, she showed in two, three classes Thursday night and made a real good show. William Bean on Colors Blackjack from, from Cookville. Cookville. Linda Miller from Cookville on Domino's Ragtime Gal. I believe Linda also showed the she other She sure night. did. Joe Humphrey on Mills Delight from Sparta. And Diane Mathis of Baxter on Delightful Mac. So, we've got a big class tonight in this particular show.
these are your walking horses that you can get out and take on a pleasure ride and go on the trail. You don't have to worry about losing those built up pads feet. You don't have to worry about keeping them in a tail set. They're strictly pleasure horses. So once a horse has the, the pads, a walking horse has the pads, they stay on? Well, they don't have to. In fact, in, when show season's not going on, say like in another month or two, a lot of these big show horses that are here, they'll pull the pads off of them, let their feet grow out, and then continue to let them just grow all winter. And then about March, February, March, put the pads and the shoes back on them and start all over. That would be more or less on your aged horses that don't need to be worked every day through the winter. There you see William Bean on Colors Blackjack. Might want to mention that a lot of the show horses that we've seen in past years, as they get a little bit older, some of the people do pull their pads off of them, put regular shoes on them, and, and turn them into pleasure horses. Because it's the same horse. Just giving a different name, huh? That's right. <laughs> Those built up feet and pads and chains make them carry their feet just a little bit further, you know, further out and, and a little showier. Notice a lot of these girls have got gloves on in this class tonight, as the men have hats on. Those are a couple of things that you don't see anymore, and that's because traditionally walking horses are representative of the old southern tradition. So they try to stay as much with that as they can. Kevin Jr. is the other rider from Crossville. 170 is Chief Sunrise James Mitchell riding. Entry on the Mr. James Mitchell of Gilham. 250 to the middle of the ride of Cookville. There's William Dean again. 144, colors like Jack. William Bean of Cookville riding. 14 dominoes. There you see Neil Givens on Ebony's black tie. 88, Joe Humphrey of Sparta in the saddle on Mills Delight. 152, that's delightful Mac with Diane Mathis of Baxter. Let's walk now. Horses walk. You see all the ribbons they've got in their hair tonight? That one's called Butterfly. And as they braid that ribbon, he's called for them to canter now. As they braid the ribbons, they just butterfly those right in with it. It makes it look a little showier. That's Randall Phillips of Cookville. And again, in this class, it's just as important on the canter that they take the proper lead. We've got a couple that's having a little problem with that. They may wait until they get on into the curve to ask the horse to canter. All of the classes that we're seeing here tonight will be shown in Shelbyville. The, as a matter of fact, Shelbyville is not just the walking horse celebration, world championship celebration. They have a lot of courtesy classes that are not a world championship class, but they have the roadster to bike, the pleasure horses, and a lot of classes that we won't even see here tonight. Uh, that show lasts 10 days. We do have some entries here that we'll be looking at later on tonight that will be in Chevyville this coming week. So if we see a few that we can recognize, we'll point them out to you. We, we haven't been given that information, but we may just know of, of some. Recognize that, them, right, maybe. Recognize some of the ones that will be going to Shelbyville. So, and that lasts for 10 days. When does it start? Started last night. It ends a week from tonight. So you may want to go to Shelbyville sometime this week. If I recommend <laughs> if they go, they go before next Friday night because your championship classes will be Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights. And it's standing room only. Most people that get their tickets have had their tickets for a number of months. They do have a few general admission seats, but if you're going to do that, you need to be there about 8 o'clock in the morning. Really? That's right. <laughs> well, there, now you've been given some good advice on what to do when you go to Shelbyville. <laughs> and you might not want to have a place to stay or a sleeping bag in your car. I think they better take a sleeping bag. <laughs> There's not many motel rooms in Shelbyville. All right. There you see Linda Miller of Cookville on Domino's Ragtime Gal. Is that a Pinto? What? The Spotted Pony? I would call that a Pinto. However, in your 
pleasure walking horse classes uh, normally when you think of a pinto you think of a quarter horse so. a western horse right yeah so we won't call it that we'll call it a spotted walking horse <laughs> right <laughs> we'll call it by its name domino's ragtime gal And you're getting to see a good look of this at this large class. I think if if I were going to enter a class, although that will never happen because I don't have a horse and I don't know how to ride, but, but if we'll I were, see if we can't take care of that <laughs> next year. No, no. But if I were going to, I would want to enter one where I did not have to canter. Well, then you'd need to enter the, a ladies' class or a two- or three-year-old class. Or if you were could fudge a little bit, you could go in <laughs> juvenile class. No, I don't think I could fudge that not much. Not that much. No. Oh, the costume class, Donna said. I could get into the <laughs> that costume <would> work. <laughs> yes, that's a good one for me. Well, you know, a long time ago... When my grandfather had horses, and that was a horse, a, a horse, of course, that was a, a class that we always entered. My cousin Mark, Phipps, and I, we always would get to get on one of the horses and get in the little costume class. Oh, so. that's fun. I'll tell you what, next year we'll see if we can't arrange to do the lead line. <laughs> I'll lead and you sit okay. on the saddle. <laughs> okay. That sounds like a good one. And Donna will talk about it. I can see it coming. And I bet Danny Vaughn would let us borrow his mule. How about that? <laughs> we'll see if we can't arrange that. Okay. And we're looking at number 402. Four is James Lawson from Crossville with a heaping spoonful. Now the canter. See, there goes that canter again. Now that would make me really nervous. You know, it's really not that hard. All they have to do, and if you'll notice, he's leaned over just a tad when he began, and each one's looking over their right shoulder to make sure they've took the right lead. All you've got to do, Becky, is just reach with your right foot up to the horse's shoulder and tap on it. These horses are very well trained that when you tap that shoulder with their foot, with your foot, and call on them to canter, they'll automatically go right on into it. Now, that takes a lot of training to reach that point. And it's much easier if you can, if you're in the curve when the, the call comes for the canter, or if you are just close enough to it to fudge a little bit, go on into the curve and then call on the canter. Because when you're in the curve, the, out, the inside leg, which is, in this case, the right leg, has to go out further when it re hits the ground than the other leg. So if they're on in the curve, they automatically have to take the correct lead so that inside leg will reach out further. Oh. Does hmm. that make sense? Yeah, it does. <laughs> so it's good to be in the curve? All you have to do is just <laughs> reach out with that foot and, and just say... Just tap that right shoulder. Huh? Right, and, and say canter. Now, for young kids, it gets a little confusing to them. <laughs> sure. You'd have to make sure you knew which was your right and your left. It's though. always your inside leg. All right, right Whatever right. leg oh. is the closest to the judge right is the one that has to take the lead. See, I'm learning so many things. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> I, someone came up to me and they said, well, I'm glad you admittedly know nothing about horses. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yes, I admit it. That's true. So, but you do a terrific job, and you certainly have. I, I do want to ask you one question. How could you give this up if you have worked at this for so long, Do you? and you don't show anymore, do you? I don't have time. You need to ride every day to do a, a good job, and I don't have the time that it takes to do that. I wish I did. I would love to get back into it. But anytime I want to ride, I, ha I can always go home. My dad rides every day, so there's no problem with that. But the thrill of showing, you never overcome. So you still miss it, but oh, you just yeah. don't have the time to know. Maybe one day. Yeah, we'll look for you. Maybe that costume class, right? <laughs> right. Or the lead, the lead line class. He's got the call next. So they've lined up on the north side of the grandstand, facing us. 
And the judge, who is Billy Renfro from Union Springs, Alabama, will be making his decision. Our master of ceremonies this evening, there you see our judge. Our master of ceremonies this evening is Drew Huffines of Cookville. There you see the grandstands. It's a good night tonight at the Putnam County Fair. We've got lots and lots of people here, not only in the grandstands, but lined up around the, the ring there. And you see helping out the judge, our ringmaster Donald Pierce of Cookville. Our organist this evening is Wayne Neighbors of Cookville, who does a great job. On staff, I guess, just standby, veterinarian Donald Ragan, Raglan of Livingston, Donald Raglan. And the farrier is Richard Carey of Cookville. Now, that's the guy who replaces the shoes, right? That's right. If we happen to lose any, maybe we'll be lucky tonight and not lose any. We only lost one shoe Thursday night, and it's up to the rider if he wants to take time out to get it replaced or if he wants to just leave the ring and, and go on. They only have a certain period of time. I have to look it up and see, but I think they've only got seven minutes to do that, to replace their shoe. And so the farrier has to be really quick and know what he's doing to get it back on. They have to, and that time, by the way, includes finding the shoe. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Which, if it had been Thursday night, would have been a real difficult task since there was so much mud. These, there's a lot of expense that goes into shoeing the, the show horses because they have the built-up pads, and they, the shoes and the pads are custom-made for the size of the horse's foot and for the way he walks, and there's weights put on maybe one side of the shoe rather than the other, and so they have a lot of expense in that. So when they do lose the shoe, they want to be sure to find it as quick you know, as they can. Seven minutes will be granted to replace one, one shoe. shoe. Now I have seen them uh, use, lose both shoes, and so it's important that that farrier they keep up with the time. So if you lose one shoe and he can get it back on in two minutes, you still got five minutes left. And I have seen them lose two shoes, and and it's up to the ringmaster and the judge if they want to give you the rest of your time or not. Hmm. So. Most of the time, if you lose that second shoe, you're, you're gone. You're history, huh? <laughs> you take the gate. You take the gate. Okay. Our show secretary is Jerry Cumby of Cookville. And Jerry's done a nice job all week with the Putnam County Fair and his wife, Brenda. Been very helpful for, with Channel 22, and we appreciate that. Also, Clyde Pippen, uh, our fair manager, has been very helpful, and we appreciate Mr. Pippen. And I believe Drew is ready, so we'll turn to him for the winners. If you will, please, the gate will be open on the opposite end of the ring for you to exit. Your first place award in the class, in this class number five, the Plantation Pleasure Walkers, your first place award in the class, right around entry number 588, that's Mills Delight and Joe Humphrey. Joe Humphrey from Sparta, riding Mills Delight to first place in the class. Second place award on the same side that you're parked right in, please. Entry number 77, Elam Souvenir. Go boy, Randall Phillips is the owner rider from Cookville. Randall Phillips riding out Elam Souvenir. Go boy to second. Third award in the class, third place goes to entry number 35, Little Phoebe. Little Phoebe, ridden by Tommy Vandy of Alga, third in the class. Fourth award goes to 402, he thinks the moon full. James Lawson is the writer writing for Ross John of Crossville, Tennessee. He beats the moon full. 402 is fourth. And the fifth award goes to 401, Pride's Morning Star. John Emmerich is the writer. Entry on the Vance Ground, Crossville, Tennessee. John 
Limerick writing Pride's Morning Star in a field. Big round of applause for all these fine writers on the plantation plays your class. All entries gets a big round of applause. Thank you, writers and class. Number five. And we'll go through the winners just again quickly for you for this particular entry class, which was Plantation Pleasure Walking Horses with no built-up feet. First place went to Joe Humphrey of Sparta, Tennessee on Mills Delight. And second went to Randall Phillips on Elam Sovereign Go Boy from Cookville. Third went to Tommy Bandy of uh, All Good on Little Phoebe. Fourth, James Lawson on Heaping Spoonfill of, of Crossville. And fifth went to John Enrich on Pride's Morning Star of Crossville. Debbie, what's our next class? Our next class. Our next class is juveniles on ranking horses, and they can have built up feet or they can be flat shot either one, which means they can have plain shoes or they can have an inch or so of pad between the shoe and their hoof. So. This is a relatively fast class for juveniles because these horses move pretty fast. They're looking for them to pick their feet up and go straight out rather than a walk or a trot either one. And when they ask them to move on, they move on. They go really pretty fast. So that's unusual for them to have a juvenile ranking class. And our money tonight is quite a bit more than is normal for any show. and. These classes, the first 19, have a first prize of $50. I want to mention that the Putnam County Horse Show put $3,300 in the pot tonight for prize money, and that's a big that is paying a lot. show it is. And all the money came from the county. Well, great. It's not any individual sponsored classes. I think that says a lot for, for this particular show tonight. Yes. Well, that's terrific. All the different classes are sponsored by the county then. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell us uh, who's on the fair board? I mean, on this particular horse show. Okay, our chairman tonight is Roy Fox, and he has a committee with Ray Allen Phillips, Larry Ford, Heidi McWilliams, Don Pierce, who's the ringmaster, and Harold Robin, Ro Harold Robertson. A lot of people call him Jimmy, <laughs> and Taylor Loftus. And most of these people have been on this committee for a number of years, so. And that is the Open to the World Horse Show Committee? That's right. I noticed that Heidi McWilliams has always been one of our better showmen, and she's not showing tonight that I've noticed, probably because she is on the committee. That's a hard thing to do to give up. It would be a hard thing that to is. do. <laughs> Maybe we'll see her in here anyway, though, I hope. She may be. Oh, let's hope so. We'll look for her. We have in this particular class, number 200 is Christy Hodges from Gallatin, Tennessee, on uh, Black Imperial. On uh, number 94 is Renee Sprouse on uh, Mr. Magic's Black Angel from Tompkinsville, Kentucky. There you see number 50, Marty Giesling from of Hillham on Navajo. Navajo, there you you get these Indian names on Navajo. And we also have with us tonight Sally Gibbons on Traveling Sam. And there you see Renee Sprouse of Tompkinsville, Kentucky on Mr. Magic Black Angel. And we also have with us tonight Neil Givens on Ebony's Black Tide. Also, I guess from Cookville. I assume these are from Cookville. And Neil is on 103. So as they come around, if we can see their numbers, we'll try and place the horse. I believe that's Neil Givens Jr. we're looking at right here. So well, that's Marty Gies on okay. the Hillham on number 50. <laughs> and these juveniles are making an excellent racking class show. This, what's, what's the age on that? Well, uh, juveniles are 18 and under. There you see Renee Sprouse from Tompkinsville, Kentucky. These kids show against each other all summer at various shows around the state. And they look forward to seeing each other each weekend at the shows, and they become very competitive with each other. 
There's Christy Hodges of Gallatin on Black Imperial. Vicki, I'm sure you've noticed the different way that these horses handle their movement and motion into the from the other classes that we've looked at tonight. So each different breed of horse has a, a different way of going. Now I would think that the people up on the ring, I would think would bother the horse, but does it not? Do they just get so used to it? Well, you know? one thing that I'm sure a lot of these juveniles have done is they know where their trainer is. And so when they ask for a reverse, they try to make it to wherever that trainer's standing on the side of the ring. And that little girl looked like she was getting a little bit of advice. It's a smart move. That is a smart and move. And give your horse a break because they could just turn around and go the other way, but the judge allows that for them to get a little bit of advice and, and take a minute's break and then go ahead and take the reverse. When they call for a reverse, you ha are allowed that time to stop. You turn around and you begin in a flat foot walk again or a slow walk, whichever breed you happen to be riding, whatever that class calls for, your I believe, slowest gait. I believe that is Neil Givens Jr. on Ebony's black tie. We've seen him in a couple of other classes sure tonight. Have. He's going to be worn out. <laughs> he has been in several already, so he probably will get pretty tired before the night's out. Well, that's what the county fair is all about. There you see Christy Hodges on Black Imperial. Well, Becky, have you got a winner picked out yet? Oh. It's hard to decide, but I think I might have to go with Renee Sprouse from Tompkinsville. That would just be my un unexpert guess. You didn't do that here. because it was woman now, did you? Well, no. no, no. <laughs> well, there you see Renee right now. She's got a showy horse. And well, her horse is just shy. on the verge of being a walking horse, you know. Uh, is that the <laughs> Maybe that's my problem. Maybe I'm picking out a walking horse instead. Well, when you have a walking horse, as you start training them at, from the yearling stage into the two-year-old stage, this is, ranking is what they do. And wow. you take them from that and you train them on into their gates. So that's not unusual not at all. Well, I'm just totally sitting here as a spectator. No, you're doing good. <laughs> Next year, you're going to be able to do this without me. No, no, absolutely <laughs> not. Nope. You're signed up for life. <laughs> <laughs> and you see there, Christy Hodges, Marty Giesling, number 50. And they're all lined up there side by side, practically. We have, I see four horses, although I had been given five entries, but I guess we do not have Sally Givens. I don't see that number anywhere. There are four horses in this particular class, class number six, which is the juveniles on racking horses. In order is Christy Hodges, Renee Sprouse, Neil Gibbons, and Marty Giesling. Well, have you picked out a favorite? Well, that's what I was looking at. I think I'm going to go with number 200, Christy Hodges. She's in the light blue jacket. There she is, right there. So, and they are lining up on the south side of the grandstand. Let's have the road horses ready, please. Class 7, you'll be getting the call next. Road horses, be ready. I have a bad tendency to pick one out and watch it all the way through the class and then not see the others and sometimes you <laughs> miss a, a good horse for that. Well so I think they've all done a nice job. They've We've seen a really good show in this particular category. Certainly have. If you'll notice how that most of these have stretched way out, that's part of the confirmation because they're judged on their parking when they, what they're doing now is what you call parking ability, as well <laughs> as any, anything else that they do. And 25% of this class is judged on uh, what the judge sees as he walks by them. 
And there you see our judge, Billy Renfro, along with the ringmaster, who is Donald Pierce. The, 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 the little boy on the end in the green jacket really is doing a good job. That's really how they're supposed to be parked out. That's Neil Givens Jr. on Ebony's Black Tie. With really stretched out, man. That's right. Our master of ceremonies, you see Drew there. Wins the fifty dollars savings fund from certainly is great Bank having that Washington camera over on the other side. Richard Monday. Castle doing a terrific and job, and our other camera people you. doing Thanks great jobs. I, right now, we have Steve Boots on a camera and Russ Castle on the other camera doing great jobs. We want to thank Bruce Lewis of FNI Cable and a number of the fair boards. Members helping us get our cable out to the center ring so that Road we could have that camera. Certainly Kelly has helped give a little Nine better show tonight. It has. Is ready to present the awards. First place award will ride around the opposite side of the ring, please. Remember, all entries will exit on the opposite side from the entry <laughs> gate. First place award, blue ribbon and the trophy right across the ring. Entry number 200, Christy Hodges on Black Imperial. Christy Hodges aboard Black Imperial. Entry on Masani Gregory Gallatin. Black Imperial is first. All other awards will be presented on the same side of the ring. The Jim Park Riders. Second place award to number 94, Renee Sprouse on Mr. Magic's Black Angel. Mr. Magic's Black Angel, Renee Sprouse in the irons for Charles Gerald Timber Company, Tompkinsville, Kentucky. Third award, third goes to entry number 50, Navajo. Marty Giesling of Hillham is the owner and writer. Navajo with Marty Giesling up as third. Fourth award to 103, Ebony's Black Tide. That's Neil Given Jr., the owner writer on Ebony's Black Tide, fourth in this class. Round of applause for all of these entries, if you will, please. Okay, thank you, Drew Huffines. That was a good class. We had Christy Hodges, the first place winner on Black's Imperial. And in second place, we had Renee Sprouse on uh, Mr. Magic's Black Angel. And Marty Giesling from Hillham took third on Navajo. While Neil Givens Jr. took fourth on Ebony's Black Tide. So that was a great class. It was a good class. And Debbie, you did pick the first place winner. You did. But you, you had the second place. I had the second We're doing place. better. Yeah, but what, tell them what you just told me. Well, I. <laughs> tell them what you just I, told me. I said, I believe you. I don't want you to buy any horses for me just yet. <laughs> you said I was doing better, but you're you doing a lot better. Me Maybe next year you can. I'll let you go out and buy me a horse or two. Okay. okay. <laughs> and there you see our first place right, winner. Let's open the gate and get some road horses. Here. Christy Hodges. That's the next class, class number seven, road horses to bike. And you're coming to the ring next. We're looking for one entry. Believe I can judge the class. And we're ring. ready road for class bike. number seven, which is road the road bike, horse to bike. This isn't a pony. Okay, that's my second right favorite along. class. <laughs> <laughs> and we only have one bike. entry, which is Bobby Holder of Maryville and on High Lady. And he's going to do the full Getting show, back even back though he's the, the only main, entry. <laughs> I think that's marvelous. And I think it's good of the Putnam County Fair Committee to not cancel this class out since he has come all the way from Maryville. This has always been one show that these roadster horses have looked forward to coming to because there are fewer and fewer shows in Middle Tennessee for them now. Now, will he have to go through all the different gates just like? The judge will probably call on him to go in each gate once around the ring. So. We'll probably see him not, but maybe six rounds tonight, and then they'll go on. But not only do they have to travel a great deal of miles to get here, but you look at all this harness work and how polished it is and the hours, it takes them a full day to prepare for showing in this class. So, a lot of hard work just for about 10 or 15 minutes to show. And they've moved into the road gate. 
I picked that up from Drew. <laughs> All right. And that road gate, see how swift those feet are moving and how smooth that ride is. Have you ever tried to do that? Never have. We had a sulky and a road horse, but it's you have to have a good place to work. And it's a lot of trouble to load up and come out here to the fairgrounds. It's the only place that you could do that at that time that you could you had to work a road horse. And that's one reason that not too many people have these anymore because you have to have a full facility for it. Let's turn around. I'm gonna go the other You'll way. notice when he turns around, Becky, he has to take a great deal of room to make that turn. When you've got several horses or in this particular class, it can really get hazardous <laughs> when they ask for the reverse. I bet, because he has really just cut all the way across in the middle of the green and come back. And yes. Well, those poles there don't look real flexible. I don't guess you could turn them very easily. Not very well. You'll notice he's got his table colors on tonight. And if we had more entries, you would see the same, that they always have their, their stable colors. That's Bobby Holder of Maryville. He is the owner of High Lady, which is the road horse to bike. Bobby certainly deserves a hand for supporting the Putnam County Fair and Horse Show because he's been here for a number of years. And he was in the pony class for earlier, and, and he won which made his 15th year to win on that same pony. Which is commendable that he's been coming that many times. That's right. Doing a good job. He's with Holder and High School <laughs> Stables in Maryville. That's right. All right, help me make a little noise now. Let's get him up into the high gear, and we're going. Now they're moving up, aren't they? And ask for the high gear. <laughs> <laughs> He's asked for the high gear. You'll notice the crowd picks up, the music picks up, everything picks up when they ask for him to go at road speed. And we're going to turn it over and listen to the organ playing of Wayne Neighbors as he's doing a great job. And just watch this pony or horse run. When I see these, I always feel like I'm at the races, <laughs> especially with all the colors. And he's getting a nice response from the north side of the grandstand. And I'm sure he's getting one from the south side, too. Now let's jog. Jog, please. All right, line up time. Coming on the track, north side of the ring this time. The road horses and the road ponies have a little bit of a disadvantage out at a place where we're crowded like we are outside the show ring. They love to get them warmed up a lot out there and get them ready before they come to the ring, but in a crowded space like we have out in the back of the grandstand, it's a little bit tough to get them warmed up and ready to go. Very quick. And we understand that there's still a little traffic jam getting into the fairgrounds. That's right. For those of you who are listening <laughs> and not in line. <laughs> and not in line. Guess what? There's a line <laughs> to get in. I just wonder if it's still back to the courthouse. I don't know. My husband Peter just came Last and he said that it had taken him 45 minutes. He obviously wasn't watching us. <laughs> he was not watching us, no. <laughs> so, uh, but that, don't let that discourage you. We still want you to come down. Probably now you could come and there'll be no line, so... That's not true, Donna says. There will be a line, but come anyway. So last night at the Putnam County Fair, you're going to have 365 more days before you can That's come back. Right. So you ought to come down and get that cotton candy and candy apple and all that other good stuff. There's Bobby Holder. will be presented to entry number 105, Hiya Lady. Bobby Holder is the wheel. He's from Maryville, Tennessee. He's also the owner. He's been coming down here to Putnam County the fair for a number. 
You know, so they don't call them the rider, they call them the whip. But that's true. And I had not noticed that until you just mentioned that, but uh, I've been saying it wrong. Now I'll remember. Well, only in this class. <laughs> only in <laughs> road <this> classes. <laughs> And taking first place is Bobby Holder on High Lady from Maryville. And since he was the only person in that class, All right, thank well, he you. certainly deserves to be he here. Does. It takes a lot of courage to get out there and be the only Real one. Tonight. I'm sure everybody has Let's a chance to look at you real close then. Seven, but, you know, we mentioned this the other night that You'd go to, we'd go to horse shows all across the state and we'd come back and people would always ask you, well, what did you get at the horse show? <laughs> and you'd tell them, oh, I got first and, and you were doing great until they asked you, well, how many were in the class? <laughs> you didn't want to say. No, you didn't. Oh, there were a few. <laughs> there were <laughs> one or two anyway. Okay, we're coming up on juveniles, yeah. 17 and under on walking horses. So this should be a real good class because we're going to be looking at the show horses in this class, not just pleasure. They are allowed to have the built-up feet, the cut tails that are set, and chains on their feet. So we should be seeing a, a good variety of good dressed-up show horses. The, the works. That's huh? right. We'll get the works with this class. Okay, you're seeing it live from the Putnam County Fair, Channel 22's coverage. And Dip, we were trying to there think the other night how many... Uh, Years we've been covering the Putnam County Horse Show live and the Open to the World Horse Show, and you've been with us three years. Three right? years. So uh, live, I believe we have covered it three years, and then the one before that, we covered it on tape and, and ran parts of it. So, but certainly is a pleasure, and you would be surprised at how many people comment oh, that they've seen the, right the show, and through the winter it surprises me. Oh, I saw you last night on TV. That's right, because this will come to you again this winter on a special series called Highlights of the Putnam County Fair. Every Monday night at 7 o'clock? Uh, whenever Donna decides to run. <laughs> <laughs> it has traditionally been then, so it probably will again. But it is a very popular show, and we'll show all the different things that we've been taping throughout the week. And we're on class number eight. That's class number eight. We're looking at number 855, Shaker's Glory with Misty Phillips up. And he's owned by Phillips Shoe Store of Monterey. Oh, that's right. Jim and I was asking to go to running walk now. Showing the running walk. And they've moved into uh, running walk. 111 East Coast State. That's Eric Swafford riding for John Swafford in Pikeville, Tennessee. Number 101, Little Doctor. Greg Craven's as smart as the honor rider. 23 replicas, duplicator, Chad Poland. That's Eric Swafford with Ebony's Dust Eight. His father was the judge Thursday night. Oh, and he's from Pikeville. That's right. And 251 Sun Dust Royal Flush, Mickey Wright. And the other folks in this particular category are Greg Craven from Sparta on Little Doctor. Chad Polan on Replicas, replicas du Duplicatory. <laughs> replicas Duplicatory. He's from Glasgow, Kentucky. A lot of Kentucky folks down here Lots tonight. of them. Uh, Misty Phillips, as you mentioned, on Shaker's Glory from Phillips Shoes in Monterey. And Mickey Wright on Sundust Royal Flush from Cookville. All right, all in this we have a good class tonight. Sure do. Back on the rail on a flat walk. The Cookville Horse Show on Saturday night is always well represented by people from East Tennessee and Kentucky as well. I think the fair or horse show committee must do a lot of promotion for our weekend show. And of course, these people are in route to Chevyville. A lot of them. We've had, as you mentioned, we have had a really good showing from all different places this evening. And that's that's fun. Makes a good show. Lots of folks here tonight at the Putnam County Fair for the very last evening. 
and the Midway's going, and the horse show is going, and everybody seems to be having a good time. This show tonight is a sanctioned show, sanctioned by the Walking Horse Breeders Association. And it is a federal law that each one of these horses, before they come into the ring tonight, after they're ready to be, come out of the stable and they're ready to come in to be shown, must go through a federal steward station for inspection to make sure that their feet are sound, meaning that they've not been sored, they don't have any scars now. It used to, they just looked at them to see if they were sored, but this law has been in effect long enough now they're looking for scars as well. If there's any evidence of anything like that, they're uh, prosecuting these people now, so we're having a much cleaner for show, and we're seeing a lot more involvement now from people. It scared a lot of people off from it for a long time because it became a nasty thing to be involved with. Right. It had a bad so name for a while. It there, did, it? but now the Humane Society and the FDA has really helped clean this up a lot, and, and we're seeing a lot of people get back and involved in it again. We've gone in the canter now, and this young man's taken a very good lead in the canter. That's what President Kennedy used to call the rocking chair class. Rocking horse. Rocking horse, you're right. Not rocking chair, rocking horse. Rocking horse. That was one of his favorite gates, incidentally. Oh. The rocking horse. Well, this certainly now is synonymous with Tennessee. So if anybody <laughs> enjoys being in Tennessee, they got to enjoy walking horses. Right. And we're looking at Gre Greg Cravens from Sparta on Little Doctor. And they've asked for a reverse. Or have? Yes, and then there, there you see Mickey Wright on Sundust Royal Flush of Cookville. Mickey showed quite a bit the other night at the Putnam County Horse Show. Yes, he did. If you'll notice, these kids are really doing an excellent job tonight. They're keeping themselves well spaced out from each other, and that's unusual for kids. The adults don't really do that well. <laughs> it is a trait of better showmanship for them to keep themselves spaced out and as close to the rail as possible and this is something the judge is going to look at as well as the horse all these things combined together count they really are doing a nice job and they're they're dressed very well mm -hmm. and they look really sharp good good show in this class there you see misty phillips of monterey on shaker's glory Takes a look to see if the judge is watching her. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blame her. Well, if he's not, she's she can ease a good up rider. Again. That's right. She knows. And one thing that really helps give these kids a, uh, some enthusiasm about showing is as they approach the judge for you to clap for them. A lot of people clap when you get in front of them. And the trick is to clap as you're in front of the judge. Oh. Oh, that's so, a clue. Now, see, I never knew that. I always clap when they got in front of me. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that way, when the horse is right there in front of the judge, he knows the crowd's with him. I wonder how many years I blew it for you, Debbie, no. when I was clapping for you and <laughs> you were in front of me. But it's a real thrill. Hey, we've got a treat coming up here in a minute. We're going to get to see something.
and you can see Mickey right there. This is the juvenile class. 17 and under on walking horses. Let you know who's in this class again quickly. Eric Swafford on Ebony's Dust Age from Pikeville. Greg Cravens from Sparta on Little Doctor. Chad Poland from Glasgow, Kentucky on Replicas Duplicatory. Misty Phillips from Monterey on Shaker's Glory. And Mickey Wright from Cookville on Sundust Royal Flush. Good class and a lot of, of good showing here by these young folks. Okay, and the judge has asked for him to pull in and come in so he can take a better look at them. Needles and Nails has been one of the uh, booths that has uh, been uh, located here at the fair this week for your pleasure, and they've had their drawings. And I'm sure these kids are glad that that class is over with so they can, can rest a little bit, huh? That's right. He gave them a good workout for there to only be what, four entries in that class. There's five, and he really did give them a good workout. Mm -hmm. Let them go quite a while. And they've lined up on the south side of the grandstand. I guess one of the most exciting so we get to see their south side. <laughs> is the hospital yes. when it's birth time for the grandchild or for the child. Well, I heard a story I wanted to relate okay, to you okay. while we tie in this class. I'm sorry, I said that. Prospective fathers, they were pacing the waiting room outside the maternity room in a hospital. The and nurse you comes see the judge says to one, and our ringmaster. That uh, he had a new son. The man said, "Well, that's He's the way it should have been because take my a, wife is make number his one." A few minutes. I guess he already nurse runs pretty much back knows out. at that she point. But the other. Uh, Men, she jotting says, down the numbers your wife the has to make sure he's got the right number the for what position I guess, I guess. Been because and he's turned the information over the to the ringmaster the and the ringmaster is taking it up later, there to do it you know sometimes the Becky they'll have a decision says, made and because that confirmation does count for 25 percent he'll change his mind and he might swap first and second around after looking at taking a closer look at them so it's important when you park that you do a good job that's right. right. He said, I ain't staying no longer. I work for seven up. And <laughs> right. Drew Huffman's telling another joke. Unfortunately, we missed most of it. Maybe we'll get one of his tonight. Of course, all of you heard about the excitement out here on Monday at the fair. The kid that swallowed the dime, the quarter, and the nickel. Yesterday morning, the doctor asked the mama how everything is coming along. She said, well, there ain't no change yet. <laughs> there was. We heard one. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna go now to Drew Huffines for the class winners number of Class eight. 8. The juvenile 17 and under, flat shot style, racking horses, you be ready. You're coming to the ring next, class number eight. Riding to the opposite side of the ring, your first place winner is entry number one, 11, F Eric Swafford on Ebony's Dutch H. Eric's from Pikeville, the century on by John W. Swafford. Ebony's Dust H111 is first in the class. All of the awards will be presented on the same side you are parked, and your second place award goes to entry number 101, Little Doctor. That's Greg Cravens. Greg is from Sparta. Five-one Sundust Royal Flush, and that's Mickey Wright of Cookville. Sundust Royal H Flush. Mickey Wright of Cookville rides to third. Fourth award goes to number eight fifty-five Shakers Glory, and Misty Phillips is riding entry on by Phillips Shoes Monterey. Fourth award to eight fifty-five Shakers Glory, and Misty Phillips riding. Yes, come on, these riders, a big round of applause for class number eight, juvenile 17 and under on walking horses. And you're watching WCTE TV, Cookville, Tennessee. And we're getting ready for class nine here in just a moment, and we have a special treat, Debbie. 
of you being with Caldwell Bank or Robertson Realty. We get a, an extra treat tonight, folks, because we're going to give you some information that no one else here knows yet. No, except for Neil and the fair manager. And the fair manager. They That's know. Right. Ha, that, Neil and the fair manager have known all week how That'll much money has been on the money house. And we've had people that have look forward to this every year it's an annual Last thing for them now nine, to come by and guess how much money is on the money house million. and whoever guesses the closest amount or the correct amount takes the whole little house so john tregillis has the winner for us okay hold on just a second oh. john. don't want you to give out the information yet so you see the money house there you all did some really tricky things on this <laughs> money i want you to know that i went by last night and i put in my little guess and I, Debbie, I'm sorry. Well, I, I thought you were a lot cheaper than <laughs> what you are, I think. I, I only guessed $41. But then I started seeing all these little, uh, I thought were $100 bills on there. See, that's what happens when you but, marry a banker. Yeah. <laughs> I know I did that once. But you folded, you, <laughs> you folded the, the tens, right? And so the 20. It, so that it looked like a $100 not, bill and a $200 as, There's not bill. anything see? such as a $200 that's right. bill. <laughs> but uh, I had to ask Peter to figure that out. Now, yeah. look, see, there's the 10, but it looks like 100. Uh, but, and, and then there's, there's the 200. And there's see, not, and that gives you the clue that... There's not any such not, thing yeah, as a $200 no, bill. I know. But I had already made my guess before I even <laughs> saw those, or I would have really guessed higher than $41. So I didn't win, folks. Well, we want to give a very special thank to, thanks to oh, Neil Bly with it's the it's Putnam County Sheriff's Department for guarding our money house. That's a necessary thing because there may not be that much money on the house, but a lot of people guess a tremendous amount. And so they do got, he does an excellent job of keeping a good eye on it for us. He certainly does. Okay. And we're going to ask John to let us know who the winner of the Money House is this year. The winner is Sue Davis, Route 2, Cookville. And what did she get? $131.79. And how much money is on that house there? $131.93. Oh, boy. <laughs> she got really close. So Sue Davis of Cookville, you're a proud winner of the Money House from Caldwell Bank for Robertson Realty. And you have that every year here on the north side of the Grand State, Every right? year. And so I guess we'll continue to do that. Okay. And I guess they're going to let the folks out in the Grand Stand know here in just a moment. And we'll be letting you know who the winners are of the presents we're giving away from the fair this right. year. Right. I'm looking forward to getting my Sesame Street sure. box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. And we're looking at the flat shot style racking class. And there are quite a few entries in this class, as you can well see. And we have some young riders here, too. Well, Peter didn't guess too well on that money house either. Well, he but he knew there was not he any. He knew there was not a two hundred dollar. I said, "Look, look, there's a hundred dollar bill on there." And then he goes, "Yeah, but look at the two hundred dollar bill on there." So, but that's a fun thing to do, Debbie. It that's, is fun. fun. It really the fun is making the house. I bet. Do you help do that? Oh yeah. And then I put all the money on myself, and Neil double checks it. And he always makes me give him a sealed envelope and the fair manager a sealed envelope before we even bring it down here. That's a great idea. So he keeps us straight. When you've got the world champion, what is he, the world champion power lifter? <laughs> I think he, yeah, you don't, nobody messes around no. with him. <laughs> okay, so you can look forward to that again next year, folks, if you missed out like I did. And I'm going to think you're more generous next year, so well, I'll, I'll guess higher than 41 You know, the guess is people finally started figuring out that I was the one that put the money on there so they started guessing lower amounts <laughs> okay in this class we have james pierce from monterey on becky Stricker. we have quinlan guppy from monterey on sports clowns image gary bowman from monterey on brandy's ebony fancy and wayne bronner from hartsville on pride of dean Max Swafford from Pikeville on Chad's Rebel. Kevy Rich on Flashy. Flashy yeah. Girl. Flashy Girl, there you go. From uh, Tompkinsville, I believe. Also from Tompkinsville, we have Joe Phillips from, with Pages Bay Lady. We have Dwight Crowder from Lafayette on Big Time Delight. Greg Garrison 
from here in Cookville on Contenders by Power. Sally Givens from Crossville on the Ebony's Black Tie. We've seen that one before. Yes, and, and I didn't give Neil, I said was from Cookville in that last class, and he was actually from Crossville. Um, also, Barbara Morty, Morley, Morley, and she showed Thursday night on Mercy and did quite well, I remember. And she's showing Mercy tonight. She's from Cookville. We also have Cliff Taylor on Luke from Cookville, I believe. So we have a full class tonight. It is a big class. You know, th these horses that we're seeing, we also saw in the juvenile on ranking horse class earlier. And that's the good thing about these horses. Once they get them cleaned up and to the show, they can bring them in two, three classes. Makes it worth your while to come all the way from Maryville or Knoxville or even Tompkinsville. We've got a lot of Kentucky folks here tonight, so. I need to ask them to slow down, back down to a walk. Sally Gibbons riding from Crossville and 164 is Mercy. Barbara Morley of Cookville is a rider. 12 entries and that's the flat shot racking class. Now that's a, well, we can't see her, but we have a real young rider in this class. She's in the walk, and we're going across to the north side of the ring this time, and lining up. Watch your ringmaster. It's the north side of the ring, and lining up. Sally Gibbons from Crossville. And the judges ask them to come in and line up, and they're going to line up on our side this time. There's the young one, Sally from Crossville, doing a nice job. That's a good-sized horse. That is a good size horse for a little girl. If you That's Ebony's Black Tide. Her feet don't even go past the <laughs> saddle. <laughs> and it takes a lot of control for somebody that young to be able to ride because when they go in the ring, they want to turn around and look at the crowd. They want to look and see if mama or daddy's watching them. And it takes a lot of concentration to keep a horse that size under control. And she's really done quite well, as most of these kids have. And the judge will be making his decision here, as you see our riders. They're face facing us because they're on our side of the line. That's a pretty shot. That is a pretty shot. Look at these ribbons with the gold and black satin. A lot of work goes into that, doesn't it? Got a star. Is that what you call that in the middle there? A star. A star in his forehead. Look how shiny those hooves are. We're going to have a workout tonight. It means the judge wasn't able to make a decision. And... So and he's asked, the others, asked you will, you will take the three horses to come in and, and park. And that could be Taking our first, second, right. and third winners we're and looking at. Gotta give us a little bit of space between the entries so we can get a good look at you now because you're being judged. Strut to step, hold up, let's turn And the around. judges ask them turn to space themselves the out entry. well so he can take a better look at them. And our young rider did a smart thing and waited until most of them passed her so she could she sure did. take some time there and get in line. We'll go back to what I originally said. <laughs> Pick the rail like you were going. Is that right? And they're sort of confused as to which direction to go at the moment. The ringmaster's job is really First hard, and the, the judge is doing the calls right now Spread instead of letting the ringmaster. If you'll notice, they've got hand signals Sorry, that they right, use the from the ringmaster again. back to the master ceremonies. When that ringmaster, who's out there in white, Donald Pierce tonight, puts his hand out to his side and he lifts his hand flat, then he's asking for a flat foot walk. Um, if he takes his hand and cups it and starts doing it in a mountain motion, uh -huh. uh, they're asking for a canter. And um, when he wants them to go on in the running walk or, or to move on, he'll just do as you would if you were telling somebody to move on. You 
some of these riders that go from week to week from show to show, instead of listening for the signal, they'll watch for the ringmaster to give that signal so they can get prepared to go right into that gate as they call on it. Going on a slow rack. And they're going at a slow rack. Which is a pretty swift speed. And this is class number nine, flat shot style racking. They're not really going for speed in this class as much as they are going for style. So it's important to them for the judge to see how well groomed they are, how they're handling their feet movement as well. Now these are pleasure horses, right? Well, they normally have always been pleasure horses, but we're seeing these more and more included in the horse shows now. This is a breed, the uh, ranking breed is a breed that's just been formed a few, in the last four or five years, and it's becoming more and more popular. There's not as much work that has to go into these horses. They don't have to have the cut tails, and they don't have to have the built up feet. And there's a lot of things they don't have to have. And the judges asked for him to move on. Grove and Sam. Traveling Sam. Traveling Sam. It looks like a G, but it's a T. And we got G.E. Thompson from, I assume, Tompkinsville on Supreme's Echo. Kentucky. Leland Spriggs uh, from Crossville on Pride's Promise Me. Uh, number 32 is James Pierce from Monterey on Another Fool. Brian Willis from Lafayette, Tennessee on Aces Idle Dice. Also, Mike Swafford from Spring City on The Reverend and Mr. Black. Joella Penny Club from Livingston on Strike Tour. And we're looking at number six, Mad Max, with Jenny Ray up from Tompkinsville. And we have John Garrett on another black shadow from Jamestown. And Ted. I believe that's Ted Turner. <laughs> Not sure. Um, from Hillham on Delightful Shaker. And Lonnie Belly from Hillham on Spark Carolina 861. Randall Pitcock from Tompkinsville, Kentucky on Pride's Fair Change. David Miller from Tompkinsville on Steamboat Willie. Also from Tompkinsville is Jimmy Ray Gerald. Or you mentioned that earlier. Maybe just Jimmy Ray on Mad Max. Connie Wilson from Tompkinsville on Shadow, number 20. And also from Tompkinsville, J.E. Thompson, Mr. Magic's Black Angel. And we've got a timeout, Becky. We've lost a shoe, so the farrier is on the clock. They're timing him. That's Richard Carey from Cookville. And he's got seven minutes to get this show back on the road. <laughs> and... We may just take a little break here while he's doing that to let you see one of the other highlights we've been working on during the fair this week. We're gonna let you look at the photo contest while the farrier gets a workout. What's your name, please? I'm Ruby Stewart. And what category did you enter this year? Category. And what is your pet? A uh, beautiful horse. Uh, the horse's name is Fashion. And uh, we came to know and love this horse through some uh, very special people in Sparta, Tennessee, the Wallaces. And uh, there's two beautiful children with this horse, and uh, we're very proud of the picture. 
Now, did you pose it or was it by accident that you got it? It was pretty well a pose. It's a very gentle horse and a very beautiful horse. And are you glad you won uh, first place? Yes, very glad. Okay, thank you. What's your name, please? Sylvia Stewart. And what category did you win in? Pet, and I have a picture of the same horse, third place. <laughs> And this is a horse, and the baby horse that's mine has a colt named Cobra, and the, the colt is nursing. This is my first walking horse, and I was real excited about both pictures. Now, did you pose it, or was it uh, just a natural picture? This was a few hours after the baby was born, and I just was out taking about a whole roll of 36 pictures, and uh, he was nursing, and I just got that pose of him. And what made you enter it in the Putnam County Fair? Well, I've just really got into photography the last few years, and this is the third year I've won a ribbon, and I'm, I'm real proud of it. I don't have a camera that's real fancy, but I enjoy taking pictures. Okay, well, congratulations. What's your name, please? Brenda Wilson. And Brenda, what category were you in? Scenic, and I got first place. And what is your picture of? It's Alvin C. York's gristmill. And when did you take it, and what inspired you to take it the way you did? It was about three months ago, I guess. I just like the view. Of and why did you enter it in the Putnam County Fair? I like doing the photography, and I'm proud of my work, and I like, I like entering. Okay. Now, Boyd Evans, you have quite a few winners today, don't you? I have three pictures that placed. Um, one is best of show, one was first place in telling a story, and one was second in black and white. Okay, I think we'll talk about the one about telling a story because it was rather interesting. Can you tell me where you found the tree first? That tree was in Davy Crockett State Park. And why does it tell a story? Well, because people have carved their names and a little bit about themselves and who they like and all in the tree. Okay, now you've got one in Best of Show. I don't know, do you enter that for Best of Show or does it just pick that way? I uh, entered it in a different category and it won Best of Show. And what is it a picture of? It's a picture of some, some draw horses pulling a plow through uh, some corn stalks. Now, did you take that by accident, just happen to see the scene someday? Uh, I saw the scene and it reminded me of fall. I thought that's a picture that represents fall and that's why I entered it in the fair too. Now, how did you get into photography? Oh, I've always enjoyed taking pictures. And why did you enter them all in the Putnam County Fair? Um, seemed like the thing to do. Okay. I'm Velma Flat. I entered it under Mrs. Holly B. Flat. That's my husband's name. <laughs> and what did you enter in the photography contest? A colored picture. And what is it of? Uh, it's a picture made in uh, Butchart Gardens in Victoria, Canada. And uh, do you like photography? Yes, I do. I'm rather an amateur. I've had this camera. I got it, got it for Christmas um, all three or four years ago. And I've been taking several pictures since then. What category did you win and what did you place in it? Uh, I placed first in the colored picture. I also entered a scenic view and um, also won uh, in telling a story. Well, you did very well. What's your name, please? I'm Geraldine Hagens. I entered in several categories, but I placed third in telling a story and I uh, just came by when they were setting up the circus one day and it just seemed like a, a very interesting shot. It wasn't posed, it was, it took several shots, but, and I do believe in supporting the fair. <laughs> well, that's great. Uh, do you like to take more of the natural or do you like to pose the pictures? I prefer the natural. You get usually, uh, you don't get these strange faces and looks. I, that's my choice, natural and scenery. Okay, well, congratulations. What's your name, please? I'm Marguerite Pointer, and I won second in the scenic category. And what is yours a picture of? This is on our farm, and in the fall of the year, it's beautiful up there because we are surrounded by mountains. We have a pond with the cattle and everything, and it was just perfect for our picture. And so we just we were taking pictures that afternoon, and I happened to get that. And why did you enter it in the Putnam County Fair? I always enter everything I can in the Putnam County Fair because it's something that we all should support and I just wish more people would. Well, thank you very much. What's your name, please? Danny Hall. And Danny, what's your picture and what category are you in? Okay, my picture is in the scenic view and the picture is of uh, some mountain ranges in the Grand Teton National Park. 
and obviously you were out there on vacation. Yes. Yeah. And did you do you just like to take a lot of pictures? I take pictures. It's the only way I can way I can remember anything is just take pictures of it. And how long have you been been shooting pictures? Mm, approximately five six years now. And why did you enter it in the Putnam County Fair? Well, uh, I just like to see what other people think of it. Let uh, other people see, and, and I know how much I enjoy looking at the pictures, and other people do too, I suppose. Well, I think they all do, and I think there's some beautiful pictures that didn't win, and I don't want anybody to be discouraged about that. Um, we thank you all and hope to see you again next year. Thank you. And you can see we're live from the Putnam County Fair here in Cookville, and they're still working on that horse out there, trying to get his shoe on. The farrier is Richard Carey. Donna, you want to give away one of our prizes, or are we going to give them away all? All of them. Oh, <laughs> look, look here. Well, isn't that sweet? Debbie just got her a candy apple. Your nice husband brought you one, too. Keith North. Yeah, only because Peter brought me one, huh? That's it. Ooh, it looks like a good one, too. Mine was real good. But Peter got half of it, so Keith will probably get half of yours, too. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna draw a little. Oh, oh, we've lost one. Okay, now wait a minute. This is the WCTE TV drawing here. And Debbie, since you're here, I'm gonna. You mean I have to oh, put Dan, this the good candied apple to down? You have to put that down. But now, what I, I don't want to stir these up because I'm afraid that now, I'll. Um, what are we drawing for? This is for the Muppets album. This is okay. we've been had a booth here at the Channel 22 booth, and we're going to give away first this Muppets album. So deep, dig, dig down in there and try and find in. something. Okay, here we are. And, and we the have. winner of the Muppets album is Nicole Kozub of Cookville. Nicole Kozub of Cookville. You won the Muppets album. Write that down. <laughs> Nicole Kozub of Cookville, you just won the WCTE Muppets album. See, it's got Kermit on it and all of his little friends. Okay, hold that there. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. Are we, now what are we now, giving away? Now wait a minute. Now we're giving away. Well, we were going to give away the Mr. Rogers lunch pail. It was a little sack, but someone purloined it from our abode. No, this I afternoon. didn't. Not you. <laughs> someone stole it from our booth. This, I wanted this it real morning. bad too. It's but we're going to order another one. Okay. Just for you, whoever this is going to be. So dig in there. Okay. So this no, is I'm for let you the lunch one. pail that I wanted that I didn't steal. That's right, <laughs> but someone else did. <laughs> so if you see someone that has a lunch pail that looks like yours when you get it, you'll know who got it. Miss Margaret Knight of Cookville won the little Mr. Rogers lunch. Well, it's, it's actually a little bitty tote bag. You could put your lunch in it or whatever you wanted to but you'll be getting yours in just a little bit because we have to get another one thanks to someone who I took it from Okay, now what are we giving away? Now we're giving away the Sesame Street backpack, so... I take that. That's See good. this? Yeah, well, that's Sesame cute. Street backpack says, I back Burton Ernie. This goes... Yes, someone <laughs> took one of these also. <laughs> I'm going to quit. <laughs> <laughs> and this goes to Amanda Maxwell of Cookville. And Amanda, you're going to get your very own WCTE TV, I back Burton Ernie backpack. Amanda Maxwell. Now, Dan, did you want to draw up for the chair? Is that it? Okay. okay. Is that all right, Debbie? So it's me. Dan, the cameraman, who's been working real hard. Donna, you could probably gonna have to move. So Dan, the cameraman, can come up here. Can you get any closer? There, you see his face. You need to dig in there good. This is for the Sesame Street chair. Oh, he's pulled one out. And the winner is. Kim Harville, isn't she the fairest of the fair? I think so. Kim Harville of Monterey, who is, I think, the fairest of the fair, just now, just won this little bitty Sesame Street chair. So congratulations, Kim Harville. This, along with your trophy, are remnants of the 1987 Putnam County Fair. Oh, <laughs> Dan, the cameraman, said you also want to date with him if you want it. So, okay, Dan, okay, you and the rest of the world. Okay, now wait a minute. So, folks, you know who you are. We'll be getting these to you shortly. What happened to the little purple seal? 
Oh, no, that wasn't to give away. Oh, that was, I uh, surely I was going to. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> the little purple seal that was over here that we were babysitting for a friend of mine. We were oh, just right. babysitting, Debbie. Okay. Now, all oh, you wonderful folks. Oh, look at that. Maybe somebody that's had a, for me. Somebody had a big time <laughs> down on the midway. You think that one's for you, <laughs> Maybe. Huh? You got your candy apple. You better okay, eat it. Okay, that's mine. And all, all you right. nice, nice folks well, we're who back signed on. up at the WCTE TV booth, we certainly appreciate it and hope that you will. Hope that you will come back next year because we're going to give lots more away and we're going to chain it down so it doesn't, excuse me, it doesn't leave the booth ever until we're ready for it to. It wasn't me, really, it wasn't. Are you sure? I'm positive. Well, you I said promise. you didn't even get to sign up, so maybe you just, no, you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't do that. We're back on the rail again with the style racking class. They had to take a time out there while they got a shoe back on, right? And they got it back on in time, and we didn't lose anybody. So we're doing good. We are doing good. And again, Becky, they only had seven minutes to get the find the shoe and get the horse reshot. There's number 25, who is John Garrett of Jamestown on another black shadow. There's number 50, Joella Pennycup of Livingston from strike, Riding Strike Force. Come into the style rack now, the style rack, please. And I'll try to remind you who some of the folks are in this uh, particular class. Uh, it's a big, big class. There you see number 104, and that is Ted Turner. I believe our learner, maybe Ted Lerner, on Delightful Baker. He's from Hillham. On King's Wild Spirit is J.L. King from Scottsville, Kentucky. Let's walk. There you see Randall Pitcock of Tompkinsville, Kentucky on Pride's Fair Change. We have J.E. Thompson on Supreme's Echo. Neil Givens on Traveling Sam from Tompkinsville, Kentucky. Leland Spriggs on Pride's Promise Me from Crossville. James Pierce on, from Monterey on Another Fool. Brian Willis from Lafayette on Ace's Idle Dice. Mike Swafford from Spring City on the Reverend Mr. Black. Joella Pinnacuff from Livingston on Strike Force. John Garrett from Jamestown on Another Black Shadow. Ted Lerner from Hillham on Delightful's Thaker. Tony Bell, Tony Belly, possibly, um, from Hillham on Spark. Caroline 861. There you see J.L. King from Scottsville, Kentucky on King's Wild Spirit. Also, Randall Pitcock on Pride's Fair Change from Tompkinsville, Kentucky. David Miller on Steamboat Willie. Jimmy Ray Gerald on Mad Max from Tompkinsville. Connie Wilson from Tompkinsville on Shadow. And J.E. Thompson from Tompkinsville on Mr. Magic's Black Angel. Lots of people from Tompkinsville in this category. This is an extremely good class we're looking at tonight, Peggy. There you see Randall Pitcock from Tompkinsville on Pride's Fair Change. And there's number 20. And again, these horses are going for style, where usually when you think about a racking horse, you think of speed. But this conformity and consistency of the gait and their style is what the judge is looking at in this particular class. So this is a, a more dressed up version of your racking horses than what we're used to seeing. And it's a big, big class. 
Now, it's been the judge's trend tonight to divide up and have workouts, but because of the delay they had with the... Whether the, they'll do that? I don't... I really doubt that he will. We'll just have to say. I don't expect that he will, though. And we have quite a few classes tonight. Um, just to let you know some of the things that are coming up. We'll be seeing the walking show pleasure, three-year-old walking horses, the open western pleasure. There you see number 861, who is Lonnie Bell, or Lonnie Belly, on Spark Caroline 861. So, that may just be Spark Caroline with no number. We're not sure. He's from Hillham. Putting on a nice.